Welcome to the holiday edition of Grove 911. I'm Officer Mike Vandervoort. Officer Katie Phillips. And it's a little blustery out here. A little I almost frigid. stuttered over my name because I'm right? a little cold. All right, I'll let you know if uh, you have any drip, if yeah. you let me know if I have any drip. Good thing uh, you don't have a beard. It's actually uh, not too bad out here. It's the wind that's kind of cutting through us here right. a little bit. Oh, well, it's uh, winter in Minnesota. That's right. That's why uh, I've been preparing for winter. Yeah. And so I've been trying to get ready for hibernation. <laughs> Is that how you do it? Isn't that how the bears do the it? Bears do that's it. right. So, uh, where are we right now? We're at Mayor Bailey's house. Mayor Bailey's house. That's right. Actually, we're in the middle of the road uh, <laughs> filming a, sh a show. So, if you see us dodging traffic, um, I it's, think we used to do that as kids, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe what was we word? can't do that Game anymore. Yeah. Whatever it was. But, uh, yeah, we're at uh, Christmas. The, the Christmas mayor, I think, is what they refer to him as. Right? And there's, I don't know. That's a, I look He's at a that. mayor of Christmas. Mayor of Christmas. Yeah. That's right. Look at it. Look at his house. It's I so know. Christmassy. And and hopefully we get a shot of it. But his neighbor is is pretty awesome. He's got a <laughs> sign up, and all it says is "Ditto," with a. Uh, it's funny. Pointing to that house. There's no though. way you can meet it. It's kind of like no, uh, yeah, yeah. what's it? What's that movie? Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. But there's Griswolds. A, the Griswolds. This yes, is the Griswolds. Yes. But I look at this and I see a, a pretty expensive electricity bill. Yeah. So, but maybe he just turned it on for our show. And as you can see, we've got traffic coming through here. We'll just flag them through and uh, Come on. wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> so just watch your speed, make sure your seatbelt is Slow down. So, um, but uh, like I said, uh, it's kind of, the wind has kind of <clears throat> died down a little, little bit here. My, my mouth I is think freezing. So, I think my face is so numb that I can't even, I, I know, I, I don't got even know. I got a smile here. But we also have a special guest today. We do. Came all the way from the North Pole to be on our episode. All the way. All the way. And so uh, Santa will be here throughout the show. You we'll probably see some Santa Clauses back Santa, there. I Santa, I know. That's right. So um, being that we are cold, we're probably going to move a little quicker than yeah. we normally do. Uh, so our episode. mouth doesn't freeze or we have uh, a little nasal drip. But uh, what else do we have coming up? Oh, we're, gonna, we're going to uh, kick it off to... Matthew Officer Sorgard. Matt Sorgard. To who, talk about uh, winter driving safety. Yeah, these, I mean, the roads are getting slick. They are. By the time you see this, everyone's going to be a, a pro, but that we just had our first snowstorm. It was awful at work that morning. Uh, oh, it was bad. It People were a three-hour commute to work, and I worked the next day, with a lot of crashes. So, yeah. so let's toss it to uh, Officer Matt Sorgard, and let's see, see what he has, has to say. With winter upon us and snow flying, I'm here to talk to you and give you some safety tips to keep you safe on the roads this winter. Uh, one of the best things you can do to keep yourself safe this winter is to keep a driving kit in your vehicle. Things consist of flashlights, blankets, extra clothing, hats and mittens. Also things that you want to keep in there, some jumper cables, cell phone chargers so you can charge your cell phone. If your tires are spinning because you're stuck in the ditch or you're stuck in, on some ice, you can throw some kitty litter or some sand underneath your tires to help you with some traction to get loose. Also with your floor mats, you can do the same thing if you have no kitty litter or sand. You just slide them underneath your tire and roll your tire on top of them. It'll give you a little bit of traction, hopefully, so you can get going. One of the big things in winter is obviously if you've lived in Minnesota, you realize that things freeze quicker than others. Overpasses are one of the biggest things, being that they're not directly on the ground. They tend to have a higher freezing rate, so be careful on going over bridges, look for ice, and also underneath overpasses as they do not get direct sunlight during the day in order to melt the ice or snow off of the roads. Cottage Grove has a winter parking ban where you're not allowed to park on public streets from November 1st to March 31st. This restricts you from parking on any street from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., allowing public works to clear any snow. However, if we receive any snow during the daytime, you are not allowed to park on public streets that would restrict public works from gaining access to clear snow or ice. Again, this is Officer Matt Sorgard with your Cottage Grove Police Department. Remind you to drive safe this winter, keep you and your family safe. If you have any questions regarding driving safe during this winter, feel free to give your Cottage Grove Police Department a call. Well, thanks, Matt, for taking time out to talk to us about uh, driving safe. Driving I mean, safe. If you've been here long enough, in Minnesota, sometimes at least. you need a little refresher when the snow flies. But uh, I think people are mostly cautious. It really comes down to speed and, and distracted your, driving. Yeah, too, give yourself so. some time. Mm -hmm. you know? Give your time. To, give yourself time to stop. Yep, so and give give yourself time to leave earlier for work so you're not rushing so you're not speeding yep so then you check can't your stop. tires check your tires yeah check your tires officer you're... ed weber and i pushed about 50 cars to the intersection that last uh yep. snowfall so i bet uh i bet if you had tires. i bet if you had a sleigh 
I, I you wouldn't I, need tires, right? We could just get Rudolph and yeah. he could just lead the pack and we don't even have to drive right. on the road. Speaking, Speaking of that, <laughs> I think we have a special guest here who came in on a sleigh. Uh, why don't we welcome to the show? Santa! <laughs> well, hey, look who's here! Oh, hey, so how was the flight? Uh, cold. Cold, uh, uh, chilly? Yes, well, it's, uh, but. I you found know. us okay? You found, found the lights? lights? Yeah. Well, Could you see that from the sky when you were flying? Well, the people in, uh, for uh, that have stock and XL Energy are going to really be <laughs> doing a dance well, on this one. Well, Katie uh, here, she, she loves Christmas. I she love Christmas. The Halloween, the Halloween uh, show we did. Oh, really? But, no. But uh, she was really looking forward to the Christmas one. Oh, the Christmas, Christmas is my Christmas favorite. Is nice. yeah. Yes. So yep. uh, what's yep. on what's on your agenda here this month? You got a well, busy I, month? I, oh, uh, <laughs> I am busy. I am busy. That, I got more appearances than I know. It. Yeah, I, I'm sure I can you're, make them all. You're, uh, you're VIP you know. this month. Yeah, and this is the only one that I have outside. Thank heaven, it's windier than the political convention out here. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so it's uh, so this is the only one that. Uh, that I have to worry about as far as outside is concerned. Well, very good. Did you bring any, uh, I know we took, we, in the years past, we've done some Christmas carols. Oh, we're going to do that. We're going to do some. Should we, should we wait till the end to well, do some we're, Christmas we're, carols? We'll get at it. We'll get at it. What, uh, what's your you favorite? Know, well, uh, you know, do you know a carol? Or do you just sing Jingle Bells? I know, is jingle that a carol? Bells. I guess that is. Carol. That sounds, a, oh, no. Yeah. See, I don't, uh, I, if I start, Singing something that you don't know the words to. Then I just say watermelon. Yeah, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah, 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 you know. So we have to work on that. Oh, okay. Uh, (laughs) And and we didn't have a rehearsal. That's right. This is all all uncut. Yeah, uncut. Uncut. (laughs) Uncut. That's right. And and so I don't want to embarrass you. Yeah, I know. I'll I'll just let you say, you. Well, Katie Uh, loves Christmas, so she's got a much better voice. No, 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 no. You know, if I started singing. Chestnuts roasting on an open, open fire. fire. <laughs> Jack Frost <laughs> nipping at, at my nose. nose. <laughs> you tied carols being sung by a choir. I don't know the word. I don't and have that on my list here. dressed up like Eskimos. Yes. I don't have those Everybody lyrics. knows <laughs> a turkey and some mistletoe. Okay. Help to make the season bright. I don't like Tiny it. tots. With their eyes all aglow, <laughs> we'll find it hard to sleep tonight. They know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies in his sleigh. And every mother's child is gonna spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. They and do. so I'm offering this simple phrase. <laughs> Two kids from 1 to 92. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Merry Christmas Christmas to you. Very good. Very Uh, good. Very good. A lot better than me. I I, I chose to stay a little silent. All right. Now, now here's the... We've done this in the past. We'll do it now. Okay. Uh, we'll sing the Rudolph song, but of course, yep, we you have to have the noses. This, this will help my, my nasal drip. Uh, yeah, and uh, and as I always said, I <clears throat> I um I don't I take a, I got a big nose, so this I, fits pretty perfect. I don't take the like noses. Right triangle. I don't take the noses back. <laughs> uh, all right. Are you ready? All right. Here we go. Ready? Yep. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows like a light bulb of the other reindeer. Special effects. all in names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Ho, ho, ho. Load off with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee. Yippee! Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you go down in history. All right, I love it. All that was right. awesome. Well, you know, 
Do you know, Santa, uh -huh. um, you know, I used to do canine. I think I can probably keep this off. Actually, you can, uh, yeah, you can keep that off, uh, yeah, but you have to put it in your yeah. pocket. I'll put it in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I did canine for almost 10 years. <laughs> really? And my dog's name was Blitz. Yes. And uh, I named him after Blitzen, Blitzen. Blitzen mm -hmm. because in the song we just did, uh, or, you know, Donner and Blitzen, that mm -hmm. means thunder and lightning. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And so when I got Blitz, he was like lightning fast. So that's why I named him Blitz, because he was lightning. So okay, that's very cool. I didn't yeah. know that. Christmas yeah. trivia for you in remembrance yeah. of Blitz, yeah. who passed away back in August, but uh, he's oh. with us in spirit. Yep, oh, that's good. Right here. So, yep. all right, we thank yep. you. We're gonna get back to the show. Um, very good. We'll let you go back in your sleigh and warm up, and then we'll have you back at the end of the show. How's uh, that? Well, that'd be fine. I, I'm, uh, well, I'm always good for that. Our, our next story we have here is actually about. Yes. Not not sleigh safety. Not sleigh safety, but do you, do you have snowmobiles up this North Pole? Uh, well, we have dog sleds. Uh, dog, dog sleds, yeah. dog yeah. sleds. Yeah. Well, we have snowmobiles around here. We actually have a snowmobile club. And this next package we're going to do talks about that. So why don't you stay tuned, take out, take a, check out our <laughs> snowmobile package, and Santa's going to go warm up in the sleigh, so check it out. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> The Cottage Grove SSS stands for Safe, Sane Snowmobiling. The Cottage Grove SS Club has been around in Cottage Grove since about 1969, back when you had to belong to a club to ride the trails. This club maintains about 13 miles of trail around the Cottage Grove area and up to Woodbury. We do uh, trail signs, we maintain them, we put them in. We do the snowmobile safety course for kids who are like 12 and all and they want to get their license like I did. Community and family is a big part of this club. The purpose of a snowboard club is first off just camaraderie, getting people together that enjoy the same sport and making the sport go forward. Our club is, consists of just about every age range down to our youngest kids which this club has always been a family oriented club so kids are very much a part of this club. I'm part of the club because I love snowmobiling and we go on like club trips and it's just fun to be with a big group of people where you can just, you know, have fun, snowmobile and discover new trails and stuff. It's just a blast. One big and very important emphasis on the club is safety. Been partnered with Cottage Grove Public Safety for 20 plus years. We have what we call the Snow Patrol. And we'll go out when the police department needs us, county needs us, anybody needs us, whether it is search and rescue, which we, thank gosh, never had to do. But we have sat on a plane crash that happened in Cottage Grove about 15 years ago, and we help do what has to be done there. One thing a lot of people do not know is that Cottage Grove has its own snowmobile rules. Riding on streets from your house to a trail, point A to point B, close as possible, which is really nice because there's a lot of municipalities that you cannot ride from your house anymore. We can still do that as long as we follow the letter of the law. So in Cottage Grove, you also have to have a helmet on all the time, where the state says anybody over 18 has their own choice. Contact the group on Facebook or come to the next meeting to join the club. This club puts 13 miles of trails on the ground every year and then we maintain it throughout the season and we take care of it in the summertime if there's something that needs to be cleared. Without new members and clubs, what's gonna happen in the future? So somewhere down along the line, we're gonna need more people to step up to maintain our sport, plain and simple, to maintain our sport. If you are in a snowmobile club, it's just really fun to have this family and this group that knows you. All right, thanks to the Snowmobile Club for that great information. And if you want to learn more, check them out on their Facebook page. I know everyone's hooked to social media. Everyone's is, connected. Yep. Everyone's got to scroll through and see what they Everyone's got a phone. Yep. Everyone's got to see that their friends are eating a BLT <laughs> sandwich or something, right? That's important stuff. Um, but, it, I mean, getting on a snowmobile is fun. It's something yeah. to do in Minnesota to combat and all the cold. And trails right yeah, here. And so it's the last thing I'd want to do right now because I can't feel my face. It's a little chilly, but people love it. So yep. on a more serious note, we like to talk about getting around and driving safe and everything like that. And we got to talk about 
houses and fires and that's right because the unfortunate you can things. see the, the fresh snow in the background yeah and so if you have a fire hydrant you in your yard shovel it, it all for the fire department yep. i think james olson's going to spend some time talking about it so uh what do you got for us james hi my name is james olson the city of cottage grove fire department is asking for your assistance with nearly 1400 fire hydrants in our city we need your help Removing snow and ice from around the hydrants greatly reduces the time it takes to get firefighters into action if a fire occurs. What you have just seen is the difference it takes in time to deal with a hydrant that hasn't been shoveled out and hook the truck If the hydrant is already shoveled, those necessary moments are then added to those firefighting efforts and we can make a difference. When you go out to shovel your driveway, make sure you take a look around at the hydrants in your area and see if you can't make a difference and shovel those out. Remember the six foot diameter and a path to the roadway. Remember your neighbors that may not be able to do that and assist with their hydrants. All of that leads to our ability to keep our community safe. When the hydrants are shoveled, we can save precious time and ultimately make some big differences in those that we serve in the community. Sometimes that means saving lives and sometimes that means saving your property. If you notice a hydrant in your area that doesn't seem to be operational or has been iced over and you need some assistance, either call the utilities division or a CSO to come out and help you get that hydrant back in service. All right, thanks James. Uh... It's always nice to have James on the show. We need mm -hmm. to get him on the show. Like here in spring. person and just um, like right here. We need to bring his drum set out because <laughs> we he can rock the drums that, yeah. and uh, we need to start a band. Yeah. We need to well, get the band back me. together. Like Santa. Now, we'll get the hair out, grow it out. You're already good. You got long hair, I so long I got to grow it out. I got too much gray in my hair. <laughs> but uh, um, thanks, James, for uh, reminding us to uh, keep our fire hydrants uh, clear for um, for you guys. Another another big topic we want to talk about. Yeah, is the reserve program. So we did a segment this past summer about the CSO program, mm -hmm. where kind of the younger people kind of get paid. The, for the, uh, the CSO program, and then we have also the Explorer program. Yes, yep. the Explorer program, um, where, yeah, there's different ways to get involved in the city of Cottage Grove and for our public safety department. So yep. our reserve program is just like that. Yep. It's a volunteer position, and we did a little package on that. And we're actually looking for more people yeah, to come. If you're interested, and um, it's a Apply. great way to get involved, and there really is no uh, it's fun too. age specific. We yeah. have we have young ones. We have people that are just looking to do something. We with have the police one department. of our officers' dad who is a reserve. Yep, so that's yep. pretty they come cool out, too. They, um, help us they, they do a lot for us they, they help us a, with a lot of stuff yeah so. you'll see a lot of them if you, if you get out in the community and you see a lot of these light blue shirt um, sometimes they'll have reserve yep. um, on their sleeves and they'll be uh, noticeable but they're yep. out and about in a lot and they help us out a lot and yep so let's take a look at uh, what the reserves do for us <laughs> a police reserve is a volunteer position within the city of cottage grove through the police department that is a way for us to give back to the community. So we drive around in a two mark squad car on, once a month and we do various patrols. We'll do park patrols, business checks, various other patrols within the city, anything that the officers need us to do. You want to take a look at the car, Bobby? This is just our way of giving back to the community and get to drive around a squad car and interact <laughs> with the kids. And... We'll impound vehicles for the officers if they make an arrest for a DUI or driving after suspension, revocation, that sort of thing. We do various parades, so we'll do the traffic, making sure that there's no cars going out of line and that there's actually the parade traffic on the parade road. We also do transport individuals out of the jail if they've been arrested, and we also do courtesy transports as well. So if an individual is, say, in a vehicle that's being impounded or the driver's being arrested and the passenger has nowhere to go, we'll give them a ride up to the gas station so they can find another route so they're off the busy intersection of road. Justin and I go out often together. We get along together. We know how each other works, so it makes it a lot easier. We don't go as extensive as full-time officers do, but reserves are 
allowed to carry tasers, so we do a taser training. And we also, on, at our monthly meetings, we do the training, then we do defensive tactics, approaches on vehicles, and do different kind of scenarios on things that we may come across and just prepare for them. Keep moving. One, two, three. One more, one. We have to do a minimum of eight hours a month. Most of us go above and beyond that eight hours. That's a six hour patrol and a two hour meeting with training each month. Most of us do upwards of 10, 12, 14 hours a month of additional work, plus the additional events that we do, so the parades and everything else adds on as well. It's nice being able to volunteer in a city where I grew up and I know the people here, and it's nice walking around and being able to interact with people, saying, hey, you know, it's good to see you out here, and really inter build that rapport with people. But it's gonna cost you a high five. What do you wanna ah, be when you grow ah. up? As far as anybody can be a reserve, you know, you have to go through the process of getting hired, so it's a full interview process, so you have to get interviewed, go through the steps, make sure you're going to be a right fit for the department. But anybody can come out here and do this. It doesn't matter what your background or field is. If this is something that does interest you, I do encourage you to apply and come on be a member of the Cottage Grove Reserve Department. You give high fives? Oh, thank you. It is a rewarding thing at the end of the night. Uh, if you've helped people out, it, it's definitely a great feeling. You know, you're out keeping the city safe. If you're interested in learning more about the Police Reserve Program, you can stop at the Cottage Grove PD and pick, out, pick up an application. You want to join the Reserve Santa? What are you doing for the, the, the other 11 <laughs> months of the year, right? Well, I, uh, There's only yes, one real I, night that you're busy. You uh, work really? one night a year. One, one night. night a year. I want that uh, job. Well, I have to get ready for that one night uh, a year. Oh, you that's got a bunch of, you supervise. Uh, you have elves, I well, hear. that's true. That's yeah. one, way, one way of doing things is that the only thing. Actually, Delegate. The only things I do is <laughs> sign the checks. That's right. Uh, yes. You know, and, and look over the naughty and nice list. Oh, That's right. Yeah. yeah I see you right at yeah. the top there. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, naughty, I used to give out coal uh, uh, for naughty kids, but coal costs me not much yeah. right now, and now I give out underwear. Underwear? Yeah. Underwear. Yeah. Uh, because oh. It's, costs, what about socks? Is it, is it yeah. not used underwear? That would uh, be cool. Uh, Never well, I suppose, that. there you go. <laughs> hey, Put some coal in the used underwear? I don't know if I'd want to be on that naughty list, right? <laughs> oh, making this jolly guy laugh, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, it is uh, our show before the Christmas and the holiday season, so we really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to come yeah. hang with us and oh, um, um, kind of spread the, uh, the Christmas, Christmas spirit. Yeah. And uh, thank you to... Um, Mayor Myron Bailey mm -hmm. for letting us set up in front of his house. Um, I don't know if uh, they told he's told his wife we're going to be here. If, if she wonders why yeah. why we're out here, but uh, she's doing a good job making sure everything's all uh, the inflatables are all, back all up. All the inflatables because the wind is really knocking it down, and we got a lot of people visiting. So we're going to cut it short. Is this one of the, is, soon this one one the better hot cocoa? Is this one yeah. of the better ones you've seen? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. it's pretty good. I like yeah. it. Yeah, I got a white sock to do XL, I think. Yep. <laughs> you should. <laughs> That's very good. Well, uh, from everyone at the Cottage Grove Public Safety, Police, Fire, EMS, we wish everyone a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New holiday Year. Happy season. Um, Happy everything. Yep, Happy drive New safe. Year. Get a sober ride. All that stuff you're going to see. Um, and make sure you have a sober ride come. You know, Santa has a problem with uh, with alcohol. I think he just doesn't like it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you got too much time on your hands. Yeah, so yeah, you got you can't right. be doing that yeah. stuff. Oh, no, that's no, true. That's right. Well, um, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and Christmas. have a great holiday season. For everyone at Grove 901, we'll see you next year. Our community is such a passionate community, everything from what we do to our 
you know, with the food shelf, with the holiday train and that. This is just my little way of, of giving back to the community that way. Many years ago, when I first became the mayor of Cottage Grove, I was adamant about doing some of the decorations on the street poles. A lot of people knew that I decorated my house too, and at that particular time we started the uh, city tree lighting ceremony. And so there was a combination of all those different things and just, it kind of snowballed, so no pun intended, but people thought, you're Mayor Christmas. And so they just, uh, it kind of stuck with me and I really enjoy it. Well, my goal actually is just to create some themes, I guess you'd say, throughout my yard. I've got kind of an area that's more religious in nature, like with, you know, the manger scene, and I've got other parts with Santa, and like a workshop, and a gingerbread place. And it's just to create different scenes around the yard, and then having the kids, when they come by, uh, with their families, understand exactly, see if they can pick out what are some of the new things that I put out there every year. Oh. That one broke out too, so I'm about to go get a new one. You know, some of the challenges are everything from one, balancing the power, uh, literally, uh, because we did have to put in a bigger oh, line into the house and a bigger box just to handle all the power. It's just not one to start. Well, I'm gonna get back to that one. When we first started this at this location, the fact of the matter is we ended up blowing fuses constantly. We couldn't run anything in the house to keep the lights going on the outside. All right, finally. And then maintaining the lights out there. My wife does a lot with checking bulbs because she knows if, for, if it were me, I'd just go out and buy another other string, but she knows how much that would be. I'm going to show Justin how to... How what? How I put these lights up oh in the trees. Oh my god, you really don't want to. <laughs> And basically what you're doing is you're starting on one part of the tree, you get down, you move the ladder, go back up, you know, string the next section, and then hope that it doesn't fall off between the time you get to the next area. And that does happen, and then I'm getting a little frustrated, you know, because it's like, oh, now I gotta go back and do it again. But in the end, when you get to see the results and the smiles on the kids' faces, it's pretty cool. I just start around Halloween and I work during the days that I'm off and I work at night. Our ultimate goal is to have uh, Thanksgiving night is when we do kind of a lighting. And then what we do at that particular point is light up all the lights. I just want to say, you know, I appreciate everybody out there coming by and checking out the house and the, and the nice compliments it's meant for you, all the public, to come and have some fun with it. And just want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year.